You're now listening to The Festival of Football, presented by Billy Harvey and Henry Barrett. We're going to start off going through the um, weekend games. I've got my phone here. Let me get me results up. So we started off, well, before we get on to Friday night, I've got to talk about the uh, Man United-Liverpool game. I did mention on the last podcast that I thought Liverpool would slap Man United up. And I wasn't too wrong on that. Liverpool winning 4-2. Did you see that game? Yeah, Liverpool deserved to win, didn't they? Let's be honest, they were the better team. Um, Man United, I mean, they've got nothing to play for, have they? So it's kind of... Maybe <sighs> hard, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I guess they were playing for pride, really. Um, I mean, they're not they're not a relegated team. It makes them sound like they're relegated, but they can't win the league. They, they'll finish second. So, I mean, to be honest, it's just... They're just seeing it out. And even though it's a rivals game, they probably wouldn't want to lose it. But I think Liverpool deserve to win that game, to be fair. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, Man United, at times they look good, and Liverpool's defence were just shocking as per usual. But we'll get on to more about that when we get on to the game that they had at the weekend. So we move on to Friday night. And all, all I can describe is we must have entered a different twilight zone because it was Newcastle 3. Manchester City 4. What the hell was happening there? I mean, firstly, Pep put in Scott Carson in goal. That was a throwback. How old is he? 40 odd? He's got to be, yeah. I mean, the last played a Premier League game was it 10 years ago, but I think he did it so that he would get a medal. So you have to play at least one game or something to get a Premier League medal as a goalkeeper. Didn't it used to be 10 games. It used to be, yeah, and they changed it. So because I mean it, it's not fair, is it? Say like you're in, say like you know, you play five, six games to start of the season, you're a key player and you get injured. Yeah. It's, not, it's not really fair, is it? But, yeah, I, I think it's right for him. It's nice for him to win a Premier League title. He was, at one point, you know, England's number one, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not saying much. <laughs> <laughs> it's not saying much, um, no. Yeah, but, I mean, it was a good game um, from what I saw. Newcastle did well. Um, and then Torres just bangs in a hat-trick. Where's he been all season? Yeah, he's, he's a good young player, isn't he? I think he's going to be one of their key players in the years to come. So much pace, so much technical ability, great winger. I mean, it's a shame because he's in a squad that is full of great wingers, like they've got Bernardo Silva, Riyad Mahrez. And the list goes on and on and on. And when he's had game time, he's done really well. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't think either one of us predicted a 4 3 Man City win, did we? So, no. I, I think we both get a point for that one because what it is, if we get the right score, we get three points. If we get the right way, we get one point. So we both got a point for that. Moving on to the next game, Burnley nil, Leeds four. Now you predicted, wasn't it a three nil for Leeds? Yeah, yeah, I said Leeds would smash them, and they did. They absolutely hammered them. Yeah, mate, you was right. I think I went Burnley two nil. I was far off on that one. So to be fair, yeah, you get two, you get another point for that. So you're you're two one up at the minute, Bill. Jeez, oh, jeez, makes makes a change. Yeah, it does. Now, for the life of me, I cannot remember what we predicted. I know, I think we both predicted Southampton wins, yeah. but we didn't predict a 3 1. I know we didn't. So, both get a point for that one. So, that's 3 2 to you. Now, Brighton and West Ham was 1 1. Yeah. And I did, I did predict a 1 1. Yeah. I think I remember. So, that's three points for me. You went for a Brighton 3 0 win, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> you had some spice, haven't you? Really? You know, so I'll just go through the rest of these games and then we'll talk about Tottenham and West Ham games in more detail. Palace and Villa. Um, Palace won 3 2. Now, I believe I, I predicted a Villa win. What did you predict? Was it Palace or Villa? Probably Villa again, I would have thought. Um, yeah. I don't think I would have went for Palace to win that game. It was a good game, actually. I watched a bit of it. Yeah, um, mate, it was. It was is that every time Villa got in front, they just decided that they didn't want to win anymore. It was really weird. Um, Tottenham 2, Wolves 0. I mean, that's a surprise. I mean, I, I, I thought it was going to be... Can you remember what we predicted for that game? Because I swear I predicted a 2-0, but I can't remember. I can't remember, and I know I went for a Wolves win because I wasn't... You know, I'm a very pessimistic Spurs fan, so I definitely would have gone for a Wolves win, but we battered them. We absolutely battered them. And I, it surprised me. It really did surprise me because I thought that we wouldn't, you know, given the recent performances that we've had, we wouldn't get anything out of that game and showed me I was wrong. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that in a bit, in a second. Now, a game that was interesting, West Brom 1, Liverpool 2. 
Mm-hmm. Now, look, there's so much to talk about in this game, mate, from dodgy refereeing all the way up until what football's all about. And just before we speak about that, Everton nil, Sheffield United won. What a result for West Ham and Tottenham. Yeah. On the blades. Well done, the blades. Absolutely superb. Pretty much, if we win one more game each, we're guaranteed European football of some kind now. Everton have lost it. Um, so that's good. That's a good thing. Um, I think it's safe to say, out of everything that we, we predicted, I think I overall got the most points. Yeah. And I, it, West Ham won one game that got me the most. So <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. That's one win to me. One <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll start with the Liverpool West Brom game. I mean, West Brom looked really good going. I told you, West Brom on the attack, mate, they they could cause that dodgy Liverpool defence so many problems. Mm-hmm. And they did. And I mean, like, um, Robson Carnu coming out of nowhere, rolling back the ears, mate. Like, she, he's always been a good player, to be fair. He's always on his day, like, for Wales as well. I remember when he played Belgium and he'd done that little spin and Belgium defence was just like, which way did he go? Where's he gone? But yeah, I mean, he, that was a brilliant finish. And then the dodginess of Liverpool's first goal. Mike Dean trips, um, I can't remember, was it Fabinho? He trips him. And then Fabinho trips, loses the ball. Mike Dean doesn't do a drop ball, which he should have done. Mm-hmm. He blows up for a free kick. And gives a free kick to Liverpool, which then the West Brom player that, you know, was there, um, he blows up for a free kick. He turns around and says, like, why have you given a free kick? Fabinho takes a free kick quickly, which means he's out of position, which leaves so much space, and Liverpool end up scoring from it. Yeah, granted, it was about a minute before the ball was in the back of the net, but still, it weren't, you know, it's not acceptable that the referee shouldn't be given a free kick for that. And I find it really interesting because during that game, before that happened, um, Martin Tyler mentioned that Mike Dean wasn't allowed to referee Liverpool games for many years because of his Merseyside connections. Okay. but now he is, and then this dodgy thing happens where he fouls a Liverpool player and gets a free kick. <laughs> oh, what the hell? But to be fair, Liverpool got back 1-1. West Brom should have, I still think, got more goals and got the win. Um, but, you know, last minute, last kick of the game, Alisson comes up, brilliant free kick, uh, free kick, brilliant corner, sorry. Alisson jumps up with his big head, boom, heads it, brilliant. That was the best header I've seen for a while, even though it was from a goalkeeper. And then brilliant scenes at the end, you know, with everything he's been going on with his personal life. I mean, absolutely amazing for him. Um, you know, it's always horrible if you lose any world one, but to lose your dad, that's been so instrumental in your footballing career. You know, that's why I feel like sometimes football is just beyond belief. Like, it's just so many things happen in football that you can't explain, mate. And that was just one of them things. It was destiny in some way, you know, that he was going to do it. And, yeah, it's just superb for him to actually get the winning goal as a goalkeeper, the last kick of the game, pretty much. Unreal. Yeah, it's crazy. And um, we've seen it in the past as well, haven't we, with goalkeepers coming up for headers and stuff. Like Schmeichel used to do it quite a lot, and he's got a fair few goals um, like that as well. And then we've seen some bizarre goalkeeping goals, like Paul Robinson against Watford all those years ago when he just... And Foster, yeah, I was, about to t- I was about to say that, yeah. Yeah, so we, goalkeepers... And then we've had, like, you know, not in the Premier League. Howard. Yeah, but we had the Paraguayan goalkeeper, was it Chilave, that used to score free kicks on the regular occasions for Paraguay. Yeah, I remember that, yeah, he used to come up, take free kicks. Yeah. Crazy, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, to be fair, like, Liverpool needed that goal. And to come from their goalkeeper was it's just crazy scenes at the end. And yeah, if they didn't win that game, they was out of the top four race. But I mean, you could you could feel now that they could they they could sneak it. They yeah, mate, I, I definitely they're, they're definitely going to get top four. Either way, it there's either there's a there's a few things I see we're going to happen here. So it all comes down to Leicester Chelsea. If Chelsea beat Leicester, it's better for West Ham in a way because then Leicester have to beat Tottenham on the final day. Um, to stop Liverpool mm-hmm. because I think they're slightly got a better goal difference but if Leicester beat Chelsea Liverpool only have to win the last two games and Chelsea can't catch them so because then Chelsea only got one game theoretically and you know it was a big big blow for Chelsea this uh, losing the FA Cup final to Leicester the way they did as well yeah. I mean Tillman's 
we haven't even got onto that yet. We'll talk about the FA Cup in a minute, but honestly, like seriously, like it's just crazy how like so many things can still happen. I mean, I'm a bit more relieved than what I was on Saturday night um, watching the West Ham game. Yet again, like we were just so dominant with the ball, like we were moving the ball around. Brighton couldn't stop us, and then you know we didn't look like we were in trouble at the back. And it's again, Diop's not in the team. Dawson and Obama's back. We didn't look like we were in trouble. They had a half chances here and there, but they weren't doing anything really that bad. But one thing I will want to get onto, and I said it to you a few weeks ago on the podcast, I can't remember which one it was, but with Lingard, with all this praise, has to come criticism. Mm -hmm. And watching him against Brighton, he was lazy. He didn't give a crap. He was giving the ball away so many times and then just letting people run past him, not even bothering to try and win the ball back. And it was, it was getting to the point where I'm like, get him off the pitch. He's not doing anything. He's, he's, he's letting the team down. But like you, you see things afterwards, like reviews and whatever the game, and no one's mentioning Lingard. They're blaming like Antonio and whatever else. And don't get me wrong, Antonio was crap as well. Lingard and Antonio, like I put a post out afterwards saying they were both awful. Antonio was running around making pointless runs, wasn't even like impacting in the game, taking crazy shots like he can do, you know, giving the ball away again, um, Lingard giving the ball away again. Our best player on the day was four now. And yeah, he did that Burkamp skill, mate. And when he did it, he, like he flicked it through his legs, through the other guy's legs. I thought, oh, this is like a Burkamp. And he didn't have the run, the strength and the pace and the power to get in the box. He lost the ball. But for me, like he was the best player on the day. He missed a couple of chances, but you have to be there to make these chances. Lingard's given a ball away. He's not even doing what he was doing a few games ago. Same with Antonio. Yeah. Um, we're just at this point now where we're pick, pick, picking these players because we're West Ham and we can't not play Lingard. Yeah. But at the same time, we've got someone like Ben Rama on the bench. Now, granted, he didn't play well against Everton, but he came on against Brighton. We go 1 0 down, Danny Welbeck. I knew Danny Welbeck was going to score. And I, I kicked myself afterwards. I said to myself, do you know what? I should have put money on it because I knew he would score. Just a typical sort of player that would always score against us. Um, yeah, so when he scored, that was it. I was fuming. I did something I've never done before when watching West Ham. I was so angry, I threw my phone on the floor. Oh, I, thought I, I thought I broke it, mate. I was I was living. And like Lingard was annoying me even more. And then like Ben Rama scores that goal at the end, and he's like the character of West Ham. Normally they would just fold over and let so many goals in and just like just fall away, not even put up a fight. You know, you've dropped one goal in the 80th minute. Oh, that's it, we're done. Like, that's what West Ham's normally like. Mm -hmm. But this year, we have shown character, you know, and, and that's something that you've got to, you know, now that dust has settled, I can look at it and say, you know what? We showed great character in that game to get back to 1 1. Years have passed, we wouldn't have done that. And Ben Rama, brilliant finish. Got to thank Ben White for staying down, making out he was hurt, and then trying to get a foul and not getting one. Otherwise, he might not score, but we got the goal. But all I took from that game was we haven't got Champions League football, not because of, you know, Chelsea, Liverpool, Leicester, Tottenham being the big boys that they are and being better than us and just being too big for us and too good for us. We haven't got top four because of us. Because yep. we've been poor at times. We've wasted opportunities. Every time there's been an opportunity there, we've not took it. You know, we beat Newcastle. We would have done well. We got back to 2-2 two -two with 10 men. We lose 3-2. If we beat Arsenal, we're free new up. We draw 3-3. Free -free. Like, what are we doing? Like, these chances are blown again and again. Chelsea, yeah? We could have beat Chelsea. I told you we could have beat them. Yep. The, only, the only blessing I can take is that we've done so well this season. Teams like Chelsea, Everton, Brighton, instead of playing attacking football they sit back and defend against us because they know how deadly we are on a counter-attack. So they sit back and defend and say, break us down, and we're nick a go on a counter-attack. And that's what they all did. Even Chelsea did that against us. So in a way, you've got to say, do you know what? We've earned a lot of people's respect. But respect's not enough. Do you know what I mean? We, we, I was gutted that we are not got Champions League. I really am. But, you know, we've got a chance now, battling out head-to-head -head with Tottenham for Europa League. And I want Europa League more in the conference, 
because I was looking at it a little bit. And at the minute, if we got the conference, we'd be playing, I think Villarreal might be going into it. And then you've got um, is it Roma from the Italian league. So you never know, you know, you could get one of these teams and it's just, uh, I don't know. But yeah, oh, from that game, I just, I was disgusted with Lingard's performance. It was just lazy. I really, I really didn't enjoy it. And it was really annoying me. I just hope when we play West Brom, West Brom look good against Liverpool. I'm worried, mate. They're going to have fans behind them. I just hope that they go out trying to impress their fans and we hit them on the break early and get a goal or two and kill the game off. Because we only need one more win. Everton's three points behind us. We've got goal difference ahead of them. So if we get the win, they can't catch us. You know, they can get the same amount of points, but they've got to play Man City against Man City, uh, at Man City, where Man City is going to be lifting the trophy in front of their fans. And they're not going to want to lose that game, City. So, you know, it'll be hard for Everton to to, to catch us now. Um, but we'll see what happens. Tottenham game. I mean, from what I saw, they looked good, mate. Tottenham looked all right, you know. Deli Alley again, yeah, they're raving about him when he weren't doing too much, but he, he looked better than what he has been, to be fair to him. Maybe it's his new haircut. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's kissing Pep Guardiola's door as well. Maybe that's helped him in some I saw aspect. that. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> he's playing with fire, man. Well, he's not going to get a move to Man City anytime soon, is he? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, the thing is with Deli Alley, like, he's playing good now because he knows this is his last chance to try and get his way into that Euro squad. And we'll talk about it when we talk about the, Euro, the Euros in the, after this. But, Boy, he's not in mine. <laughs> he won't get in. No, he's not in my team either. But <laughs> I, I, him and Lingard are very similar. They blow hot and cold. And they're, they're like, as people, they're too interested in their social accounts and their social nights out than developing as football players. And that's why we haven't seen them develop as players because they're not as they're not as interested in that side. You know, they get a lot of money. Mm. They're more interested in posting like a good Instagram post with them doing a dance or doing a boohoo man advert or whatever it is than you know being on the training pitch and actually developing as a player. Because I, yeah. I think I think Deli Ali's lucky to still be at Tottenham, if I'm honest. He hasn't done anything this year. He did nothing last year either, really. Mm-hmm. And if it was me and PSG, like apparently were interested in him, I'd ship him off. He'd be like, thanks, thanks, but no thanks. Bye. Yeah, I think the, the problem with that was PSG wanted him on loan, didn't they? Do you know what? This might sound very controversial, but do you know what club I think Deli Ali suits? You go for it. Arsenal. Arsenal. He won't yeah. sell him to Arsenal. But. No, they won't sell him to Arsenal, but I'm saying I think he suits Arsenal. He's that... Arsenal have always had that one creative midfielder that they... Who's good, but, you know, Arsenal fans big up way too much. And that's what Deli Ali is, in my opinion. You're right, what you say. You know, they're just worried about the social media accounts. Like I saw the thing with West Ham the other week. It was Mark Noble's birthday. And they're all, he's on the... Uh, rowing machine and they egg and flour him and stuff and yeah it's all brilliant it's all funny and it's it's it's, it's a laugh and a joke mm-hmm. but then you lose on the weekend yep and it's like yeah you're meant you're a footballer you're meant to have a good time and a laugh and stuff but when you put in such a like you look so like a, a cohesive unit outside on like instagram or whatever but on the pitch you don't play as it yep you know it's like the only player that I feel like links up with Lingard really well in our team is Bowen. Mm-hmm. And Bowen's offside most of the time. So that's the problem with him. And I, I heard someone say that Antonio coming back has made it worse for Lingard. So I don't know what that is. But I think Tottenham are right, mate. I mean, it all depends on Kane. I mean, it was a nothing game in the end. I mean, the only interesting thing that came out of that game was Gary Neville give on a Cody man in the match even though his team lost 2-0 yeah but Gary Neville's one of those people he just comes out with things for the sake of coming out with things like but you know why but you know why I give it because in the first half Connor Cody made I think 20 odd clearances in the first half he, he, he played brilliantly mate he did play well yeah, but so it's, yeah, he did deserve it but when you lose 2-0 you can't give man of the match to a defender if they've lost 2-0 no, you can't. And I, I think, like, we've said it about Gary Neville before, like, he has his favourite players and he has his own agenda. Mm. And it's just, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I get it. If, if you gave it to the goalkeeper because he's made 15, 20 saves and you still lost, OK, fair enough, you can understand that. But to give it to a defender that's not, even then it's a bit like, mm, surely there's someone on the opposition team that's played a bit better. 
I personally like Gary Neville because he speaks his mind and he doesn't hide behind Sky and say, oh, I work for Sky Sports, I've got to be careful what I say. And in a way, like Jamie Carragher kind of... He kind of follows Gary, but he doesn't commit like Gary does, right? So that's the best thing about Gary Neville. He's, his team of the season was a joke. He put Rashford in it. Of course he's going to put Rashford in it. He plays for Man United. Well, what the fuck? That like Carragher put Souf uh, out as right back in his team of the season. Makes sense. That, that is a legit thing. He, Gary Neville picked Cancelo. I think he's been playing left back most of the season, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. He's not been in the team all the time either. So it's just putting names and moving them in different positions. But I don't know, mate. It is what it is. But yeah, yeah. but the thing is, Tottenham, I think Tottenham are all right. I think you'll get. If I'm, I think you'll get. I think you'll beat West Ham to Europe. It all comes down to the simple fact: if you've got Villa mm-hmm. on Wednesday, and it depends on what Villa turn up. If if Grealish starts and he turns up. You could drop points. If you drop points against Villa, I say, and West Ham beat West Brom, then we've got it. Because I think we beat Southampton the last day in front of fans, or at least a point. And I, I don't know, I don't think you'll beat Leicester. If Leicester need to win at Leicester in front of their fans, bringing the FA Cup there, I don't see Tottenham winning that game. But if Leicester don't need to win, I can see you winning that game. So it, it, it all depends on, there's loads of very, uh, variety varieties of things that can happen um but yeah let's move on to the fa cup quickly i mean what a what a what a game what an occasion i mean not what a game it was a pretty poor game in fact but what yeah. a what a what a, we had all this esl ball, ball crap you know mm-hmm. all these big clubs and everything and then leicester as they kept saying little old leicester no leicester for me should now be in a top six above tottenham because they have won the Premier League and they've held in the FA Cup before Tottenham have done anything, mate. Yeah. And for me, it's it's not about stadiums. It's not about how rich the club is. It's about what they're doing. And Leicester are not only doing it, they're doing it the right way. Like in that game, you can say, oh, you know, when indeed he blocked it, or Perez blocked it, sorry, it hit his hand and whatever, but it hit his knee first. So for me, that weren't handball. Brilliant strike from Tillemans. I mean, yep. he's always been a quality player on his day, and it was a brilliant strike. I mean, Kepper had no chance. But once again, what is do- what is Kepper's doing starting over Mendy? Tuchel oh, made some really I strange. Mean, he's he's losing his mind. I think he, to be honest, he shouldn't have. This is the thing that I don't get now with goalkeepers: is that you've got a cup goalkeeper. The thing is, you've got in a cup final, you've got to play your best team. And if you upset the cup goalkeeper, so what? Sell him. Like, yeah, okay, they bought him for 70 million. But if he's that upset, well, okay, then, mate, we'll take it. What I don't understand is if you've got a cup keeper, fair enough. But he played Kepper against Arsenal in the Prem. So why did he not play Mendy against Arsenal if he was going to play Kepper against Leicester in the FA Cup final? It don't make sense. I text my Chelsea friend that he supports Chelsea. And I just said, like, what's he doing? Why's Kepper not? Why's Kepper in goal? And even he couldn't believe it. Nope. I, I, I personally don't understand. Not that Mendy would have saved Tillemans' shot, but it's just the inconsistency. I mean, he put Reese James at right, right back, or not right back, right centre back, and played Aspilicueta uh, right wing. I can't speak. Right wing back. Yep. What's he doing? But like, I get it. He's trying to counter Vardy's pace, but you got Zuma there. You know, Thiago Silva is no slouch, but yeah, I don't know. I just think he fluffed his lines, mate. And I hate to say it because obviously, as I said, you know, I've got a friend that supports Chelsea, but they could literally not win the FA Cup, not win Champions League, and finish in the fifth or sixth position. Yep. And that would be a, what a failure that will be. Yeah, and I think they will. I think I don't know about they might finish fourth potentially, but it, it depends on a, a few things. But they're not winning the Champions League final, not on that performance anyway. Man City will will thump them four or five nil. Yeah, well, this is what I'm saying. Like Man City on their day is the best team in the world with mm-hmm. the players that they've got. Chelsea can do a job on them, but this has got to be knocking their confidence, man. Yeah. When you've got the manager not picking the right players for the right occasions. It makes no sense to me. Like, what's Pilisic done? Why can't he get in a team anymore? 
it's, this is what I don't get about managers. They don't play their best team. And it, it's, it's a strange one because you need to win trophies. Because let's be honest with you, Tuchel, if he loses the Champions League final and they don't finish in the Champions League, will they sack him? I mean, they'd have every right to sack him because he's flying. I mean, that's why he's only got an 18-month contract, mate. I think Abramovich went in knowing that if you don't get the job done really quickly, I'm only putting you on an 18-month contract, so I ain't got to pay you out loads of money because I've just yeah. paid out Frank Lampard all this money. You know what I mean? So I think he's... I don't know. It's one of them things, mate, but do you think he disrespected Leicester by playing that team? You know, by playing Kepper in goal and, and you know, not playing... I don't know. I just... I don't, I don't know. It, for me, I just... I think he, he blew it again. You know, he, he said it on, against Arsenal. I played the wrong team. I think you played the wrong team again, mate. Mm -hmm. Where was Rudiger? Where was Rudiger? He's been playing well for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. He did blow it. He did. And I think he's one of those things what managers do now is they overthink it. Like we saw it in the Champions League last year with Pep against Lyon. He mm -hmm. overthought that. That Man City team should have smashed Lyon to bits. But he yeah. was too worried about what Lyon had and not, not worried about what Man City Yeah, I mean, Lyon were, Leon were in good form that year, though. That, yeah, but that, even, that. even so, like, who was their best player? Memphis Depay. Yeah, I mean, they had a few good players, though. Yeah, you decent know? players, but not nothing. Like, you wouldn't take any of those Leon players in, in the Man City team, not one of them. Yeah, possibly not, no. Yeah. It's like what um, Ferdinand said when um, David Moyes came in as manager of Man United. He was like, David Moyes was too worried about what other teams had. And Ferguson was always like, this is what we've got. If different managers have different, you know, policies and yeah you know, it is but I think at that level you've got to go in like Tuchel should have gone in the game going look we've got we've got Ziyech we've got Pulisic we've got Ziyech rubbish man, I don't know. he was rubbish in that game I don't know I mean let's talk about the offside like was Chiwo offside for you yeah he was offside under, under the letter of the law he was offside because yep. he's asked it was offside yep. but this is where it goes for me at the other day when Harry Kane was given offside, it was his toe. Yep. Yeah, that was offside because it was his toe. Mm -hmm. If your armpit's offside, I'm think I'm starting to think you know they've got to come out of a rule where it's silly because you're not going to score with your armpit. You're going to score with your shoulder because you can shoulder it in. You saw the Palace guy that Mitchell yeah, do. Yeah, he did just there. Yeah. Score with your shoulder. With your armpit, you're never going to armpit it in. So it's it's got to be stuff that because if his hand, if his actual hand was in an offline offside position he won't be given offside because it was his fingers or his hand he can't hit that in yeah so with his armpit i reckon it should have stood but you know it is what it is but it's, it's just the ar getting involved and drawing lines and yep. yeah i don't know it's it's it i mean don't get me wrong it gave us a beautiful moment you know with the owner and his dad and you yep. know that West Ham Leicester game with the helicopter that crashed and stuff, and the Leicester players crying, bringing him on the pitch. He was, you know, emotional, and it got him to lift the FA Cup and everything. And for me, that was an amazing thing and brilliant for him. You know, brilliant for continuing his dad's legacy the right way. And I just wished West Ham had owners like that. You know, I don't know what they do in their personal life, but they've run Leicester brilliantly, and you know. If it's not West Ham, I want Leicester to do well because they're they're a great club. They're doing things the right way, and they're taking they're taking it to the big so called six, and they deserve it. Yeah, they do. Their transfer policy has got to be the best in the Premier League. Like yeah. their transfer team is immense. The the signings that they've made and the money they've made off those signings as well is it's Amazing. incredible. Amazing. You only got to think of like the last three: Maguire, Mares, Kante. Yep. I mean, even Drinkwater. They got quite a lot for him as well. It's again one of those things like Chelsea. Why did they pay thirty million for Danny Drinkwater when he, he couldn't even get in Man United's team? <laughs> maybe they was out of water. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and it, like Leicester must have been rubbing their hands together. Like, oh, we got eighty million for Maguire, thirty million for Drinkwater. Jeez, what are we doing here? Like some sort of magic going on in the background. You've been listening to the Festival of Football podcast presented by Henry Berry and Billy Harvey. We'll see you on the next one.